Howdy guys, welcome back to BRG Photography. This is Ben and in today's video, I want to talk about something that I come across quite frequently, especially in the kind of work that I do. And that's going to be fixing wardrobe or um, outfits that don't actually fit the model completely correctly. Uh, so what I mean is, so for an example, in a picture like this, we have a model wearing a pageant gown. This was from a, rent, a dress rental company. And so this shot looks great, but as she starts to turn and pose, we can see that the dress is actually a little bit too big for her, especially kind of in the upper chest area. And as she moves around some more, the dress starts to kind of sag a little bit and kind of reveal more than I think we want to see. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of become a digital tailor, seamstress, and we're gonna take this dress and alter it and fit it so it seems to be fitted to her a lot better and um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and get started. So my game plan for this edit is a few steps. First, I wanna raise the dress up a little bit. I just feel like that compared to some of the other shots, I feel like the dress was a lot higher uh, on her. And I feel like as she started to move around and pose that the dress kind of sagged or fell down a little bit. So I wanna just raise it up a little bit. And then once we've raised it, I wanna correct this little uh, peak here just by basically getting rid of it and reshaping the cup of the dress which means we're gonna have to fix our refill in the arm and then I want to get rid of this dark shadow here because this dark shadow is telling me that there's a big gap between uh, the gown and her skin and I want to minimize that gap by reducing that shadow making it look more like the dress is more form-fitted to her and then we're probably gonna have to come down here and extend this part of her skin just so it matches the dress a bit. That's our game plan and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and undo all this. And first thing I wanna do is duplicate this layer just because I like to have a clean layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and command J to duplicate this. And now I wanna go ahead and grab a selection of just the dress so that I can move it around where I want. So using the selection brush tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and grab uh, this dress and it should snap automatically to the edges and we're going to come down to about I guess the waist is okay okay now I'm going to go to refine just to kind of make a little refinement now affinity photo is not going to do a really good job it tends to miss a lot of the kind of specular highlights if I switch my preview to a black mat you're going to see kind of the weird kind of ghosting edges and we can kind of fix it here. We can switch our uh, adjustment brush to foreground and we can kind of start painting over. But sometimes uh, if you do it, it does fix it pretty well, but you'll notice sometimes it might go a bit too far and just add in uh, more ghosts. And you can see it kind of added in a little weird uh, like flashing and edges there. So it's best just to do it manually ourselves. So with the output set to mask I'm gonna hit apply and that's gonna give us uh, a selection I'm gonna hold down option and click on this layer just to uh, isolate it and you can see that as our selection because we have the mask on there now what I'm gonna do to help refine my mask to make it easier for me to see is I'm gonna create underneath that layer I'm gonna go to layer new fill layer and it's already set to black because I had it here if it's not Make sure you have the move uh, tool selected and then you can come over and you can change the color of your selection. Uh, I think black is easy to see in this sense, so, or in this case. So with that now done, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my mask. And here is I'm gonna refine my mask manually. So using a white paintbrush with a 100%, where am I at? 100% opacity, 100% flow, 50% hardness, a white paintbrush. And now you can see I can start actually refining this mask. Now, one quick way to do this is I'm gonna hold down Option and click on the thumbnail of the mask here, and it's gonna show me the mask. And you can see all these little gray areas that Affinity Photo kind of missed. So if we switch our blend mode over here to Overlay, when we paint over just really quickly, it would only paint the kind of gray areas. And so this is a great fast way to refine the edges of your mask. I'm not gonna worry too much about here right now because um, I'll deal with it later. But this is a great way to just kind of quickly 
uh, refine the edges of your mask. And then we can come in um, and manually make some manual adjustments that we're going to have to in a little bit. Like you can see here, it's missing all these kind of specular highlights. There's some kind of weird flashing that we don't like. Okay. Switching our brush back to normal. Let's go ahead and pick a black brush just to get rid of this extra access stuff it picked up. Now, if we have a hard time deciding what is what, we can go back to this mode, hit the mask, and it looks like that this was, let's turn this off for a second. Okay, that's what we're looking at. All right, so we'll keep that for now, but we don't need this. And this looks like from the white background. And we're gonna keep as much of the dress as we can because once we move it around, uh, it might start to look a little bit different. But we can see this looks okay. You can see it kind of missed some of these, like it especially misses the uh, specular highlights. Anything that's like a really, like here, these little black dots are, sh they should be little specular highlights that were on the dress and it seems to miss those. That black, I guess it's the skin. Yeah, this is actually quite a hard outfit just because of the color. But we're just gonna do our best and use our best judgment to do this. This is why, I mean, I actually kind of enjoy this process. This is why I do think that it's still important to have these skills and take the time to do it manually because even though we do have, you know, like regener regenerative fill and AI that can do some of this, even, you know, a really advanced computer is going to have a hard time deciphering like, okay, where's the dress? Where's the skin? Especially in an image like this where, like I said, the dress color is so close to uh, her skin color. And then down here, we're just going to clean up this edge. I guess that's actually, you know, I don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this out. And I want to try to actually make a really defined edge here at the bottom because once we move it, we're going to have to blend this in to the dress because we're basically going to be stretching the dress out to move it up. Um, and I don't want to have to move the entire thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make a pretty refined edge and just kind of place it where I think looks okay. Make a pretty refined edge. Just going to make the blending process go a little bit smoother. Okay, something like that. That looks fine. Alrighty, so now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and delete my fill layer. I don't need that anymore. And now we have a really uh, refined, clean mask. So we missed a spot here. That's why it's always kind of good to look at the mask layer itself and you can see the spots that you missed. Okay, yeah, that looks fine. I guess this little part we need. Okay, good enough. All right, now to grab a really precise selection from this mask is pretty easy. I'm gonna hold down the Command key on my Mac and click on the thumbnail of this layer. And you're gonna see it's gonna automatically create a selection around that. And then I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate that layer. Let's deselect and then uh, I don't need that layer below and I don't need that mask anymore. So I'm going to delete that mask. And now I have just a layer with just the dress on it. So now I can easily and freely kind of move it around as I like. So I felt like the dress was sitting a bit low. So I want to just move it up maybe like a centimeter or so, just something like that. Um, I'm trying to follow the back part of the dress to kind of line it up. And I don't know, we'll say something about like this. Very subtle, but a quick little movement. Uh, I think for me personally, it looks like the dress sits a bit better. I could be wrong. Maybe this is how the dress should fit, but I'm just using my best judgment. Uh, I could probably even go up a tad higher. Okay, let's go ahead and commit to this. So here we are as before, and here is the after we moved the dress up. Now, if you notice, because we moved the dress up, it got a little bit bigger on this left side. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer below that dress. And then just using a paintbrush, because we have a white background, I'm going to select this color here by holding down the option and clicking down. I'm going to select this white color. 
and I have a full opacity of paintbrush and I'm just going to paint uh, behind that new dress to kind of get uh, a cleaner edge. All right, I think that looks better. So you can see there like the dress kind of got a bit bigger and I think on this side, let's go ahead and grab this color. I think this side was okay. Maybe a little bit of the dress was peeking out over there and on this side. Okay, but I think that, that looks okay. All right, so we just kind of cleaned up the dress edge a little bit. All right, now obviously down here we have some repeating patterns. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fix that on this actual layer. That's why I wanted to take the mask off of it. So using a clone stamp brush, uh, we're just gonna have to get a little bit creative here. Let's do something like a 10% low flow for now. And some of these patterns that I think are repeating, I'm just gonna do my best to kind of hide them. Luckily this dress is really busy, so it's not gonna be actually too hard to hide some of these corrections. And I think obviously if you had a solid colored dress, like a red shirt or a black dress, it would be a lot easier. But in something like this, you know, it's going to be really like even so, for example, here, I can barely even see where the line is. I can't even see where the new dress is. OK, it's there. OK, so maybe I can see this gem got kind of cut in half. So I'm just going to hide it completely. Looks like those gems have doubled up and I can maybe just sample from another part of the dress and kind of fix it. There you go. We're just being a bit creative. We're creating a new outfit. And I think that looks fine. I don't think anybody would even look at this and think it looks weird, except maybe for this part <laughs> we didn't do so well, but just kind of blend it in a bit better. Okay, that looks fine. I'm not too bothered by it right now. We have other things to do. Okay, dress has been moved, looks good. I don't think anybody would even really notice and it seems to fit her a little bit better and we did uh, fix that as well. Cool. All right. Now let's go ahead and start reshaping this dress. So let's go ahead and make a brand new layer. Kind of like before, I'm going to use a paintbrush and we're just going to select this color here. Uh, oh, actually I can see here that the dress is still doubled up there. So it's actually... So let's go ahead and come back here and clone stamp and fix this arm. This should be pretty easy. A simple, um, just a simple clone stamp like so. Get it close. I like to kind of approach from both sides when I'm doing something big like this. We can also use the keyboard to rotate our clone stamp you can also do it up here at the top so you might have to for example rotate a little bit to kind of get the bend in the arm looking correct like so and then just rotate back the other way to get something like that okay there we go that looks okay. There's still some uh, areas of dark and light, but this can be saved for a dodge and burn step. I don't want to clone stamp too much back and forth because you start to lose texture. So we're just going to leave it as like that. All right, so there's our dress. Let's switch back to a normal paintbrush and reshape the cup of this dress here. And I'm going to just come over here, kind of fake, you know, the gemstone bumps or the texture of the dress by kind of you know creating this kind of bumpy edge here and let's go ahead and zoom out and okay i think that looks a lot better like we went from there to there it seems to fit and just look a lot more natural okay that looks pretty good next we are going to start doing the skin i'm going to do this on a new layer as well and again, pretty simple. Clone stamp. We are at, let's choose a brush that is 100% opacity, 100% flow, 50% hardness. Let's actually do it a bit smoother just so we can get that edge a little softer. So it matches. And we're going to come down 
I guess what we feel looks natural. And I want to come right up to the dress. And like I said, I want to cover up this shadow because we're actually going to recreate our own shadow, which is going to sell the effect that the dress is uh, fitted to her a lot snugger. And we don't have this big gap between her and the dress. Let's reposition our cologne stamp to do something like that. Okay, that actually looks pretty good here. And maybe if I want to smooth out that transition, we can do a lower flow in just a little bit. Okay, all right, now with all that done, now we need to kind of recreate a shadow because it does look a bit fake because even when the dress is right up against her skin, so for example, here, well, we move this so our shadow's gone. Let's go ahead and look at it like this. Even in a situation like this, there is a very subtle, soft shadow. And if we look at our before, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all this. You know, we can see that there is a little bit of a shadow uh, on that dress. And we're gonna have to recreate that to make it continue to look real. So we are gonna create a shadow using a curves adjustment layer. So I'm gonna come down to here and we are going to do curves. And we're gonna bring this down really, really dark because a lot of times shadows are actually quite dark, especially when they're really, really close to the skin. And then I'm gonna invert this layer. So now if I start painting uh, with this, we can start drawing in a shadow. Now, of course, right now when we draw, we're drawing over the whole dress. So to kind of avoid that, we can, we're gonna do two things. Because we did it in two parts, the first thing I wanna do is just make the shadow on this side. And then I'm gonna do the shadow on this side later. So to only paint in that new skin area with it we drew, I'm gonna, just like before, I'm gonna hold down Command and click on that pixel layer. And it's gonna automatically select that. So now when I start painting, it's only gonna paint in that area. Now this may not be big enough, so if I wanna add to it, I'm gonna grab this lasso tool, make sure we have our mode set to add. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna just add in some more of this selection, maybe just like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. There we go, and now, when I paint with my dodge and burn, it's only gonna paint there. Now these marching ants can be distracting, so if we want to hide them, we can go to view, show pixel selection, and it's gonna basically hide our pixel selection. The pixel selection is still there, but it's being hidden from us. Just make sure you have that off because it's really easy to forget you have something selected when you're not seeing it. Okay, so now that we have our curves, we are gonna to switch to a low flow brush. And this is where we're gonna to have to be a bit creative and just kind of imagine where the shadow should be. I know the lighting is coming from the left side because I actually took this photo specifically for this YouTube video. So I think that there would definitely be a little bit of a shadow right here, just behind this kind of cup area and maybe coming to about here. And I wanna do a little bit on this edge to kind of show where it's a bit darker there. And let's go ahead and switch to a 2% to kind of get a bit of a softer edge and do something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that off and on. And if we select everything off and on, we can kind of compare it to that previous one. Now, because I think the dress is sit sitting a lot snugger on her, uh, I don't think actually, let's go ahead and go to a black. I don't think it would actually be coming up this far. Yet. I think it really would just be coming, just kind of manually paint in this little shadow here. And maybe something like that looks okay to me. Um, soften up the edge a little bit. And because we are with a curves, we can you know adjust the intensity of the shadow to what we think looks uh, real. Something like that works. And then now I want to do a little bit of a shadow on this side. To do that, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer behind the dress, just so I'm painting behind it. Kind of the same thing. You're going to see we're going to do something like that. Invert that layer. And now I'm just painting uh, behind it. We're going to do a really soft brush. 
and just paint kind of behind dress kind of simulating that it's just pressed up against her skin a little bit only really on this side because there wouldn't be any shadow or there shouldn't really be so much of a shadow here we can look back and see how it looked before and actually that looks really really close so i think we did a good job with that and that is our shadow on that side this is our shadow on this side and i think we are pretty much done um the shadow is something that you know because i know i adjusted it it's really easy for me to look at it and be like oh that looks really fake i don't like the way that it looks it's a bit too harsh so it is going to be a lot of playing back and forth maybe i think that's even still too much something maybe this is be really subtle something like that maybe come in a little bit just paint a little bit here and do something like that now you notice i keep going back really far and that's because you know i'm on a 27 inch monitor and so sometimes when i'm too big or you're too zoomed in it's really hard to look at the whole image kind of objectively and so I'll often zoom out to about this size, kind of imagining how it would look on a phone. And it kind of gives me a better overall view of the image. So if I go ahead and press my uh, tilde key, which for me, I have it set to select all the layers. I can see that is our before and that is our after. And I don't know, guys, what do you think? Like, I think it looks pretty convincing. I think I could probably do a little bit of work on this shadow here maybe this one is a bit too dark maybe it just needs to be a little bit more again it's sometimes hard for me to look at it really objectively just because i know that i've edited it but i think that that looks i think that looks pretty good i mean you guys can tell me in the comments if you think this looks real or not um it's always hard for me to look at something that i've edited and look at it totally objectively because I just feel like, oh, I know it's been edited, so it looks kind of phony to me. But I think if I just look at it as is, I think I would look at this and not have any real clue that it had been edited. Maybe this shadow area here is a bit too dark. I want to lighten up that. I could also play with the opacity to kind of maybe get a nice uh, medium. Um, remember, shadows can be very dark. Like if we look at it from before, look how dark that shadow is. But it's so dark because there's a big gap between the dress and her skin. That's why it's so dark. Where when you have something that's kind of like this, where it's a lot closer to her skin, you know, the shadow is a lot softer here because the angle of the light. So I'm trying to kind of, I'm trying to do something kind of in between that, where it looks like it's up against her skin like we have it here but it still looks kind of fitted um yeah so i think for this video uh we're gonna go ahead and end it here i'd like to hear your guys comments did i do a good job did i make this look convincing uh, i could probably play with it for another hour until i get it really looking uh good but i think for now uh, i'm gonna say that this is done I think this looks pretty convincing. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, let me know if you have any other kind of tricks uh, to do this. But this is just one way that we can work on stuff like this. Okay, I know this video is probably quite long, but I appreciate you guys uh, watching and leaving comments. And I do have some cool, interesting videos coming up. Uh, something that I haven't actually seen before on YouTube, I don't think. so. That should be interesting. Be on the lookout for that one coming out soon. And until then, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Peace.